joined in fantastic i joined in uh 1981 um and uh i had done a philosophy and politics degree in uh in the bristol university before i joined and i was working and then i joined um i did sankirtan uh for um for around four years before I was this this thing is in the middle of my thing I was wondering if I can uh, just oh yeah it's gone now yeah so I joined I was doing Sankatan as a Brahmatrini for around four years and then my Guru Maharaj at the time who's now left um, introduced me to my husband Krishna Dharma Prabhu and uh, we went up together to a place in, Ma in England called Manchester. You, you, I don't know how familiar you are with English cities, but it's a, it's a big university town um, in Manchester. So we went there. We were there for 16 years. We started a center there, which is still going on. We have three children. During that time in Manchester, my husband um, was... Uh, started writing books like Mahabharat, Ramayan, which you may or may not be familiar with. Um, and I also went through a very difficult time during those, um, towards the end of those 16 years, because when I had three children and my husband was the temple president and he was also national secretary, so he was always away and I was left with the three children, it began, it began I began to really struggle with my sadhana. So the more I struggled with my sadhana, the weaker my sadhana got. Uh, I began actually going into a depression and I began losing my faith in Krishna consciousness. And when my husband noticed this, that I was just losing my faith and I was becoming very depressed, he completely changed his priorities. Prior to that, he was always with the Brahma trees and you know, traveling to London for this or for that meeting. And he realized that if his ashram collapses and he's got three children, then what is the use of everything he's doing? Because he's going to, we're, we're all going to struggle. So he completely changed his um, priorities and began prioritizing. We'd always make sure I was listening to Prabhupada lectures. I'd be cooking or the house doing, doing whatever I was doing. He'd just come in and put a Prabhupada lecture on. <laughs> and most of the time I wasn't listening. <laughs> My mind, you know what, I mean, you may not know what it's like, but sometimes if we have problems or worries our minds are distracted so that's what it was like for me but occasionally something prop had said would penetrate my distraction and it'd be like oh and it's those little tidbits that really began changing our lives um you know though i was losing my faith i had three children and a husband who were in krishna consciousness so i was I didn't want to ruin our family and ruin our, our lives, basically, my children's lives. So at that time, you know, prop, I heard one lecture, many of the lectures, but I would only hear one thing from it, something that really impacted me. So I heard Prabhupada saying in this one lecture, he's talking about the verse, Satam Prasangam Mamavira Samvido Bhavanti Hitkana Rasayana Kata. How many of you are familiar with that verse? just so I know, it's from the Bhagavatam, Canto 3, Chapter 25, Text 25. I don't know a lot of verses, but I know that verse because it's a very important verse in my life. So Prabhupada's talking about that verse, and then he says, so now you have heard, now what? Now you have got intelligence. Don't accept blindly. You should ask, do I agree with Swamiji or don't I agree? And if I don't agree, why don't I agree? And if I do agree, why do I agree? He said, you will see if you discuss like this, gradually you will begin to feel. Now, that was the first time in my experience in ISKCON that I had been heard from anybody that I was allowed to challenge what Prabhupada said. I was allowed to say, I don't agree. Um, I had done philosophy at university before I joined so I had a very philosophical, I have a very philosophical mind. I'm not very practical, but I'm very philosophical. <laughs> and um, so well, I would ask a lot of philosophical questions, but the devotees would always say to me, don't be over-intelligent. Don't be over-intelligent. Just, just do as you're told. Just do as you're told. Work, work. <laughs> so in order to please the devotees, I had to try to cut, 
shut down my inquisitive nature and my doubting nature. But listening to this lecture, Prabhupada said, no, don't shut it down. You have intelligence. Ask, do I agree? Don't I agree? And even if you don't agree, that's okay. Discuss it. Why you don't agree? And he said, gradually you will see, you will begin to feel. So I told this to my husband. I said, maybe we should discuss because, and we began doing that. And for the first like four or five years of our discussions, all the time, my husband kept putting private lectures on for me. Um, would you like me to pause while you greet anybody? Uh, I see pictures coming up. Would you like me to pause for a while or should I carry on? No, this is fine. Okay. So, um, yes. So we were carried on. He kept putting proper lectures on for me because my faith still wasn't so strong. It was just beginning. And what we began trying to discuss Bhagavad Gita. And for the first few years, when I was discussing Bhagavad Gita, I would get furious because I read things in Bhagavad Gita that over my first five years as a devotee or my first, no, 11 years as a devotee, I'd been a devotee for 11 years now at that time. No, I'd been a devotee for 15 years. Beg your pardon. I'd been a devotee for 15 years. So during that time, some of the things that Prabhupada writes in the Gita had really been used in a way which was very um, painful and hurtful. Things like never trust a woman. You know, women are less intelligent. All those quotes about women had been used in a way which was actually very um, hurtful. Uh, and um, so I was, I was reading these now and I'd be like, when discussing with my husband, I, I'd say, this is just such a violent statement. How can you accept such a violent religion? You know, he said, oh, calm down. Let's discuss. Let's discuss. Um, I'm talking a lot. And one of the things I hate doing is just, just talking and talking and talking. So um, is anyone following me? Is everyone okay with what I'm saying so far? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So one of the things we realized through this um, I, I want to cite another verse for you from the third canto of the Bhagavatam again, chapter 29, text 8, verses 8 to uh, uh, 10, 10. They talk about how we can do all the angas of bhakti in three modes of nature. We can do them in the mode of goodness, we can do them in the mode of passion, we can do them in the mode of ignorance. So when we hear in the mode of ignorance, we take what the Bhagavatam or the Gita is saying and we filter it through our ignorance. Uh, and you can please go onto your Bhagavatams right now if you can get your Bhagavatam up onto your device. Don't take my word for anything. Always go to the, to the quote. So this is Canto 3, Chapter 29, Text 8. Talks about devotional service in the mode of ignorance. And the mode of ignorance are... Our filter is we're very angry, we're very envious, we're very hateful. So if we have a tendency to be racist, we will read Prabhupada's books through the filter of our racism. If we have a tendency to be a little misogynistic, we will read the Bhagavatam and Gita to confirm the, the misogynism. So in the, the filter in the mode of passion, in three... 29 9 it talks about the filter in the mode of passion mode of passion we want we we want um power we want prestige we want wealth we want um to be recognized so we can read the same verses through the mode of passion and we will filter it to justify that my own sense of self-importance or we can read things through the mode of goodness. And the filter of the mode of goodness is how can I purify myself? Now, the reason I told you this is as me and my husband began reading these passages and discussing these passages that would make me very angry because the devotees in my experience had generally read these passages through the filter of the mode of ignorance or through the mode of passion and used these passages in a way which was very painful to others. When we began discussing, I began realizing that, no, it doesn't have to be understood like that. It can be understood through the filter of the mode of goodness. And then it's not so violent. Um, so gradually, gradually, my anger diffused. 
So um, I don't want to be the one who's just talking. I was hoping we would have a conversation. <laughs> Should I tell you a little bit more or would you like us to? I'll tell you a little bit more. This is one of my, I'll tell you a little bit more. So another thing we were experiencing for the first five years was not only was I getting angry at passages that I had been hurt, used to hurt me in the past, but me and my husband had a lot of bad discussion habits. In fact, these are discussion habits that many people have. We wouldn't hear each other. We talk at each other. And when we disagreed with each other, we'd argue with each other. There is a lot of background noise. I just let you know. Can anyone else hear it? Or is it just me? Can hear some yeah. nice scratching? Yes, I can. I, I don't know of whoever's got some... Hare Krishna. So um, we'd have a lot of bad discussion habits. And you can uh, tell me if any of you have these similar bad discussions. We would often, one of those is talking. If the other one didn't agree, we'd make faces like, oh, no. Or we'd look away. That's not right. You know, or we would talk at each other. We wouldn't actually hear the other one. So we often ended up feeling misunderstood. Um, we would speculate and we'd come up with, where are you getting that from? That's just your opinion. You know, so we had a lot of bad discussion habits. Have any of you experienced uncomfortable discussions where you just feel this discussion is not getting me anywhere? You're talking about maybe an issue in the temple or at home with your spouse or with your children. You're just kind of like talking at each other and there's no real resolution. Does anyone have that experience or is it just us? Can I have a show of hands if you've actually had that experience? Yes. Yeah, so we do have these bad discussion habits and we were having them and they were making our Shastra discussion, our Gita discussion, very unpleasant. It got to the point where we, though we knew I needed to discuss Gita to get my faith back, we hated just talking together. Um, in fact, in everything we were arguing, we were arguing all the time and we just began to get to the point we didn't like to talk to each other. So luckily, my kind husband <laughs> kept putting Prabhupada lectures on all the time. Just we'd have them on in the background the whole time. And we began hearing little snippets from Prabhupada about and uh, that might help us to improve how we talk to each other. All these things that we heard from Prabhupada, I now have on our website, improving our Sadhu Sangha. So one of us would hear something, we'd come to the other and say, well, you know, Prabhupada said, we should do like this. Should we try it? We go, yeah, all right, might as well try it. Can't get much worse than it is already. Let's try it. <laughs> and as we tried applying some of the things we were hearing from Prabhupada, we realized that the whole mood of our discussion began changing. And we actually began finding our discussions pleasant and helpful. And over a course of five years, everything began healing. My, my, my um, faith came back. My relationship with my husband healed and we, it, it, my husband initially started doing it just to help me, but he began benefiting from our discussions too. He began realizing that it was really helping him as well. Um, and then we left Manchester where we'd been started a center. We came back to the manor and I began, you know, talking to other ladies and I began realizing that many, many devotees their marriages are struggling in private, their faith, they're struggling with their faith. They may feel that they're coming to the temple for years and no one really cares about them, or they may have deep doubts that they, they feel ashamed to tell anybody, or they've got habits that they don't know how to, bad habits, they don't know how to overcome them and they feel too ashamed to talk to anybody. So we, me and my husband thought, let's try and share with them what, the journey that we've just gone through, you know, the, let's try to share with them the importance of discussing Prabhupada's books and how we began the things that we heard and the things that helped us, maybe it'll help them. So I think for the last 20 years, we've been around at the manor and that's what we've been doing. And um, I don't know if Ambika knew any of the ladies who would come to my discussion groups, but you know, little by little, devotees have began doing it. And those who have been began doing it, um, all like us, began to experience 
a real healing in their relationships and a deepening and kind of like kind of like the spiritual life became easier it, things become easier so that's why we've put up the website and that's why we're very passionate to try to encourage devotees to please learn good discussion habits and make a little time in your life you know if you're married you should the best person to do it with is your spouse or with your children. In fact, Prabhupada says that in the Bhagavad Gita. I will show you if you ask me where, I will tell you and you can see it yourselves. And if you're not married, if you're living in the ashram, then do it with someone else in the ashram. Um, but if you can't, if you have no one you can do it with, I can show you how you can do it alone. It's always nicer with someone else, uh, but you can do it alone. It's a little harder, but you can. And um, it, it makes an incredible difference. I'll just tell you one last thing. Since we began doing this, I've seen that Krishna has worked miracles in our lives. We had different problems that we thought were unresolvable. And Krishna worked magic. And gradually our lives went from quite chaos, chaotic lives, to peaceful lives. And, you know, kind of like, progressive little by little i don't want to be a pretender and tell you i'm very advanced devotee i'm not i've got a lot of bad habits but i i feel as if we're on the right track now we're going in the right direction now we're not going chaos so that's that's what brings me here and wants me to share that's why i want to share with you the things that helped us so thank you for listening to me that was a really long introduction I hope I can hear something from all of you as well. So um, who would like to start introducing yourself? You can tell your name and something about your Krishna consciousness that you feel significant to express. And especially, I would like to know what makes you interested in this conversation about improving our sadhu sangha? Please say everything else Ambika Mataji said, but also tell me something about why you're giving your valuable time to come and talk about improving our sadhu sangha. Hare Krishna, I can start. I am Guna. I am Guna. I am from Latvia, but I'm living now in Finland. I am also a mom of three, and I'm also still struggling a lot, but I just survive from devotee mercy. And even today, I didn't want to join because I have so many, so busy mother. But I decided that I have to stop everything and I have to sit down and just to get what devotee mercy. That's how I, my sadhana. Is struggling a lot, but I I'm trying not to make myself more depressed about or to feel guilty about that. I'm just somehow crawling in this direction just to be in Vaishnava um, association, just to get devotee mercy. And I hope someday will be easier days. May I ask you, um, yes. would you like to, what makes you attracted to devotee sangha? Why are you struggling so hard to stay in the devotee sangha? Uh, why I struggle? Why do you, because it's, uh, it's hard, why do you make such a big effort to stay in the devotee sangha? Because it's an effort. What, why, what, what attracts you? What makes you keep trying? Um... Mm, it's hard to explain that that devotee mercy it is there is nothing like a devotee mercy it's um give me an experience give me your experience of devotee mercy what has it felt like in your life it feels mercy? like um for example i have this thousand thoughts in my mind i i don't like this feeling that i can't manage everything but uh, if I stop everything and I go to temple and if I just sit with devotees and somehow those thousand thoughts has stopped and I feel more peaceful. 
Wow. That, that's the main thing. So you say you just devoted. feel blessed. Yeah. And yeah. You saying when you're with devotees, your mind calms down, the anxieties go away, and you just feel more as if I can cope. Life will be okay. Yeah, it definitely. You just feel in your heart that your batteries are charged again. Wow. <laughs> time. Nice analogy. Nice analogy. Thank you so much for introducing yourself, Guna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Anyone else would like to tell me? I told you a lot about me. I'd love to know something about all of you. Sean Radhika is oldest. <laughs> Maybe she can. Who? Sean Radhika is oldest. Is, is there a devotee called Sean Radhika in the group right now? You're muted. We can't oh. hear. Oh, okay. Oops. Okay. Hare Krishna. Now you hear me? I can hear. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Good. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I'm using this time, not the computer, but this phone, and there is not my name. So my name is uh, Shyama Radhika. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. I'm 55 years old, and I, when I was 20 years old, when I joined the temple, and uh, lived in the temple about 16 years full time and then have uh, studied and done, done some work also. Uh, yeah, what to say. Um, yeah, I feel that I, I'm kind of like the last few years I, I have become more serious uh, again and want to, I, I feel I'm going to the better path, right path now. Because uh, I had some years when I, I was not, maybe also I had some doubts and I was not so, so involved as I was the first, first 10, 15 years. Um, also affected me because um, um, Harikesh left and it was quite a big shock, you know, 20 years, over 20 years ago. And it changed something. But... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy about this topic of Sadhu Sangha because we've been thinking about it a lot because devotees are so rare, you know, those persons who actually take up uh, Krishna consciousness and uh, want, want to serve the Lord. So, but, but we can be very different, like from the material point of view, we maybe not would be together or be friends. And sometimes that might cause some problems, you know, with uh, relationships. And, um, but still we are very much connected by this desire to, to serve Krishna and be purified and, and start to love him and each other. So um, I think this is a very nice topic, which is always, um, how to say, it's always like in front. It's always there when we are with devotees. And um, I think it's an art of being able to um, serve and relate to all the all the different devotees who happen to come to our life, you know, like and not thinking too much who is advanced and who is not advanced, but like like trying to relate in a in a good way, fair way with everybody. It's it's a challenge, but it's a very nice challenge. And uh, yeah, I I'm happy that we discuss about this these things. Uh, I have to say now. Because I promised uh, I will have to leave this meeting uh, at 7 p.m. Because I'm going to put the deities in our temple to rest um, tonight. What time, because... what time is it with you right now? What time is uh, it? With... I have now it's 23 past 6. Okay. PM. So you only have a short time. About 40 minutes. I have because I have to, you know, I, I, I was not planning to do that. But because the head butcher is... He has so much to do today, so I, I want to, you know, do this seva tonight also. But um, yeah, nice to hear from you, and nice that there is also others, you know, some brabus in this meeting this time before we nice. were ladies. And yeah, it's nice to hear. And uh, I feel that I don't know you, Sintamani, Mother but I feel that you are very warm and very sweet person, and I'm very happy to hear from you. 
Oh, you're very kind. Thank you so much, uh, Radhika Mataji. I'm very grateful. <laughs> yeah. Would you mind if I reflected some things back to you? Uh, yeah. So know, no, you're please. saying you joined when you were 20. You were 16. Yes. At the, I think you, you joined and you're 20. And then you, you were in the ashram for 16 years. Yeah, about, yeah, yeah, about that time. Yeah. You left. Uh, you left after sixteen years, and you were working and studying outside. And yeah, like yeah, like I I started to study some um, healthcare and social work things, and uh, you know I was practicing you know like at home and like that. But I I you know I, yeah like that yeah yeah you were you, you were studying for a career in healthcare and social work, and so you could maintain yourself. Uh, and your spiritual life took a little dip. So you kind of... Yeah, like, yeah, I have felt something yeah, like that. Yeah. But now you're 55. So you your faith is coming back. You want to take your spiritual life more seriously. Yeah, yeah, luckily. <laughs> and you're saying that, you know, devotees are very special people because it's very rare to find someone who wants to purify their hearts and want to love God and serve God. Um, but sometimes there's a challenge associated with devotees because we're in very different modes. If it wasn't that we all want to serve Krishna, we probably wouldn't associate with each other. You know, we'd have a different group of friends. But it's a challenge and it's an important challenge to learn how to associate with each other in a way that we can love each other and help each other to love Krishna. So you feel this is a very important topic for us to talk about. Yeah. Did I understand you correctly? Yeah, yeah, good. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes. I want to model to you. I want to model to you everything that how we discuss in this uh i've given it i've get this is a little concocted but the website initially we just called it improving our sadhu sangha but that's such a mouthful to say improving our sadhu sangha all the time yeah so now we call it imos imos is the first letter mm. i for improving m for yeah i am for improving o for uh r s s for sadhu sangha so now i call it the imos method yeah. So I'm, I'd like to model to you all the time how we discuss Shastra using the Imos method, using the principles of improving our Sadhu Sangha. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for sharing with us, uh, especially with me. I'm very grateful, Shan Radhika Mataji. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I would love to hear from, from other people on the group, you know. I'd love to know you a little bit and what makes you come here today. I guess Chanardana Prabhu's idea was to go on a seniority order. So I guess I'm the, I would be the next one. Hare Krishna Gopinath Prabhu. Hare Krishna. So I'm Gopinath Das. I joined uh, ISKCON 26 years ago in Finland. And uh, I lived in a temple. Um, first of all, I was studying music before I joined. And the classic story, I uh, dropped out of school and joined the Hare Krishnas. <laughs> And, uh, uh, I lived in a temple for five and a half years doing traveling Sankirtan mainly. <clears throat> uh, then I got married and my marriage broke, no children uh, and some other uh, struggles were there a little bit. But uh, actually in the very beginning when I started chanting Japa, it's a good experience. For, it was a good experience for me like uh, my whole uh, world value system turned totally upside down and uh, uh, since then when I tasted the temple life uh, as a full-time brahmachari I definitely understood that this is my way of life no matter wow. what happens yeah. wow. um, then uh, after marriage I began to study also Shastra I ac actually moved to Mayapur uh, I have a little flat in there, uh, flat in Mayapur still. I joined with uh, uh, former Ekalavya Prabhu. Now he's uh, got the sannyas initiation. He's Sri Krishna Chaitanya Swami now. So we did some uh, um, preaching uh, kirtan tours around India and sometimes outside of India. And at the same time, I was studying in Mayapur Institute. I took Shastric courses there. Then my uh, doors opened to UK in 2014. Uh, I was serving first under Parasuram Prabhu with his Food for All team. And then yeah. I was living in a Soho temple uh, for big periods of time. And this 
background picture actually behind me. This is from UK Para Yatra 2019. Oh, really? With Parashuram Prabhu? Yeah, that's and that's Mahavishnu Swami. Here. Yes, yes, I recognize him. <laughs> and yeah. you, are you in the white playing the guitar? Is that you? Uh, yeah, that's me. <laughs> uh, I'm also um, um, being recognized as a bass player in some Harinams and some Kirtan Melo, uh, uh, Kirtan Mela. Uh, occasions in Mayapur or somewhere else also. So I've traveled around the world a bit. And now, uh, because of Corona times, I, I was in, I got the lockdown in Mayapur for a couple of months, but uh, one year ago, I managed to come back to Finland. And, wow. and yeah. here I am. To take Saru Sangha online uh, like this, it's a good opportunity now that uh, uh, devotees cannot travel and have a live yes. sadhusanga, then it's definitely good to develop this uh, uh, form of uh, modern technology in the yes. devotional service. Absolutely. Would you mind if I reflected back what I heard, what I remember from, from your sharing? Can I reflect back to you or would you like to say more before I reflect back? Uh, yeah, well, I could just mention that with the uh, Parashuram and Kiridhari's team, that um, uh, UK festival team, we toured around UK a little bit. Like a, uh, I remember one Ratheater tour that was uh, from Newcastle. We went all the way to Scotland, and then we came back from the uh, through the West Coast, Liverpool, and Manchester. All so right. <laughs> Um, and I've also read uh, your husband's uh, Ramayana version. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think Krishna Dharma, hmm, yeah. <laughs> a very, a very prominent devotee to put uh, put out there such books like this. So uh, I'm looking forward to hear uh, or maybe read Mah Mahabharata one day. Also, so I'm, I'm happy to meet you. I'm very happy to meet you, Gopinath Prabhu. I just reflect back what I heard. So you were studying music? You were at college or uni studying music? Uh, yeah, that was kind of a, not like a really college level, but we have a pop and jazz music school, ah, pop and jazz right. conservatory here in Finland. So I was, I had a bass guitar as my main instrument right. there. So it's a specialized music school. You were studying bass guitar, and then you met the devotees, and you left your course. You dropped out, yeah. and you became a full-time brahmachari. I think for around four years. I've, I, maybe I'm getting confused with other people now, but after that, you got married. Unfortunately, your marriage didn't work, mm. uh, and then you went to Mayapur to study shastra with Ekalavya Prabhu, who's now taken sannyas. I actually think I met Ekalavya Prabhu in Bulgaria. My husband and I went to Bulgaria one time when he was there. And, and Sanna, his sannyas, I forget his sannyas name. Um, so you were uh, studying Shastra in Mayapur. Mm. Uh, and when the lockdown began, you were still there for a few uh, for a couple of months. And then you managed to come back. You also have been to the UK. Um, you were at the London Temple and helping Parashuram Prabhu with Food for All. You also joined the Padayatra where you'd play the bass guitar. Um, and you traveled around England, so you've been to Manchester mm. and um, you've read my husband's book of Ramayan. Did mm. I understand you correctly? Yes, that's right. Thank you. I just let everyone know that currently we're working on a, it sounds really kind of like, oh, really? But we're at, my husband likes to write, so he's got to write. And he decided we're going to write, uh, I'm, I'm assisting him by his kindness. We're writing a dramatized version of the um, Bhagavatam, canto by canto. It's had some very good reviews uh, from devotees in general, as well as senior devotees. And I will send Ambika a link. They're all available on Amazon. But we've done it verse by verse, Prabhupada. So, and um, so you can follow Prabhupada's, but we've done it in a kind of like uh, a dramatic way. Uh, it's hard to explain, but it, it does seem to work quite well. The very so far have enjoyed it. So I'll just let you know about that. And I can, if anyone's interested, I will send Ambika Prabhu a link uh, where you can have a look at them. So thank you so much, Gopinath Prabhu. It's very nice to have met you. Thank you for introducing yourself to me. Anyone else? I guess I guess I'm next. Then. And your, your name yeah. is? My, my, name is my, my name is Janardhan. 
Janardhan Prabhu. Hare Krishna, yes. Janardhan yes. Prabhu. Yes, Hare Krishna. So I, I joined 1997, 24 years ago. And I first I lived in a temple for three and a half years uh, as a brahmachari. And then, uh, then I moved out to north. In North Finland, where I live now, I have a small like house here, which is also as a pre- we are using it as a preaching center. We are having some Namahatta groups and like that. Then, wonderful. And uh, I have I have done some I have done Sankirtan since ninety seven. Uh, I had some breaks between, but I I I've done actively Sankirtan maybe I mean book distribution maybe eighteen years or something like that. Wow. Yeah. So and and but now because of this lockdown thing, I I haven't been able to go out for the last one year now. But I'm nice. really eagerly waiting and hoping that I can continue distributing wow. books. And, wow. And um, I also have an apartment in Brindavan, so I, I bought it 2016. So la- last uh, five winters before this, I've been in Brindavan. And I also have done some book distribution there in Brindavan. And, uh, and mm, I, I'm also doing deity worship. I have, I have had Gornitai deities for 16 years now, more, more than 16 years now. Wow. And I, I've been serving them here in North. In the North Finland. And what is, yeah. And when I am... Um, I also like Sam Rarika and you told that you also had some difficult had some difficulties in in previous I mean some years ago long time ago so I also when I moved out from the temple I had some serious problems in my spiritual life and yeah. I, I had to move out from the temple and then I came back here in the north and but then somehow I, I had little break in between that I was not chanting and but somehow by Krishna's grace I, I began again I moved out from the temple in 2001, I think. And then I was chanting for the first year when I moved out. But then then I had some break. And now to, since 2003, I have been chanting again. Wow. Yeah. So may I yeah. reflect back some of the things? Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. So you joined in 1997. And yeah. You lived in the ashram to around 2021. Uh, not 2021. Yeah. No, that's, that's, that's this 2001. year. <laughs> 2001 yeah, yeah 2001 yeah. thank yeah. you yeah and um you left the ashram because you were having some doubts you were you it, you, you were un- unhappy in your krishna consciousness you left and you moved to the north of finland where you bought a house but even though you you chanted for the first year after you left and then your doubts yeah. overwhelmed you and you stopped yeah. chanting yeah. but subsequently again you picked up your chanting and your faith came back and You've been now distributing Prabhupada's books for 18 years. You use your home as a, as a preaching center, as a Namahatsa center. You even bought a house in Vrindavan. Uh, you were there a few years ago. And you're distributing books there. You love deity worship. You've been worshiping your deities, your Gornitai deities, uh, for 18 years now. So 16 faith, years. 16 years, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So your faith has really come back. And uh, even though you yeah. did have a little, a little rough patch, um, but that's what you do. And after the coronavirus, when the, the lockdown stopped, you're really hoping you can carry on with your service of book distribution. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. And, and I'd like to ask you, and I also forgot to ask Gopinath Prabhu, so maybe both of you can tell me, why are you here today? You're both very senior, well-established devotees. Why did you come to this meeting today about improving our sadhusanga? Uh, what, what attracted you to spending your time with, with me this evening? Can you can you give me why you're here this evening? What you would hope to get out of it? Mm, I guess the uh, main reason for me was that uh, Ambika has Ambika Mataji has been organizing all kinds of things because uh, at least uh, she asked me to join to her sangha, and then <clears throat> uh, she's kind of uh, directing uh, this uh, our sangha group to different things. So she introduced us this uh, opportunity. And uh, since uh, uh, we have an opportunity to associate with uh, uh, experienced senior devotees, so why not? Okay, you're saying, um, 
it's really the credit goes to Ambika Madhiji. She's mm. uh, organizing this and you're thinking she's making such an effort and she's bringing devotees uh, here who've been around for a long time. So you think, you should, why not take the association? Why not see where it will take you? What, what Did I understand you correctly? Thank you so much. And uh, Janardhan Prabhu, what brings you here this evening? Yeah, uh, Ambika Matachi, she invited me to come okay. here. So, <laughs> so, so my I, thanks. It, yeah. <laughs> So, so my thanks so it, are to Ambik. My thanks are to Ambik. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so this sounded like an interesting, interesting seminar to take part. So, okay, thank you yeah. so much. Um, and I'm aware that we're spending a lot of time in introductions. Maybe I won't reflect back to everyone every everything now because so we can get onto the topic of improving our sadhusanga. Ambika, would you like everyone else to introduce themselves, or would you like us to start talking about improving our sadhusanga? If we can go a, a quick round so that okay. everyone can say tell their names and a little bit about themselves. Yes, thank you. And I won't mm. reflect anything back anymore. Okay. Who would like to continue? You can freely you know, express yourself now. No order. <laughs> Is it okay if I continue? Yes. So uh, I'm old, but I'm not old in my devotee years. <laughs> I'm. I started nine, 2014 in Astanga Yoga, and then I start uh, singing all kind of mantras. And then I found the Krishna Bhaktas, and then I continued with them singing. Unfortunately, my body is very. Uh, sensitive and I get like a sick sick in my body but then I have like a suggestion and I, I should still learn something I'm not very good in philosophical things but I'm doing that and I, I have been in very good Matasi group for one year and we have I think we have a little bit progress it's nice to have a so we are all like a beginners, except there's few <laughs> who has been longer, uh, and we are like supporting each others, and and it's nice to have the, the company, and and I think I have so much lot to learn how to behave in a nice sangha, and I have tried to listen some 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 of your videos and I, ha I think I have learned something and I'm so happy about that. <laughs> wow, thank you so much for listening. What's your name, Mataji? Uh, I'm a Bhaktin Heli. Bhaktin Heli, very nice to meet you, Bhaktin Heli. Hare Krishna. Anyone else? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Please, my humble obeisance is... Uh, Except mine. So, so honored to be with you here and uh, I'm sorry I was a little bit absent because I I think I was a little bit uh, having a little bit fever today so I was taking rest and listening to your talk all of you but yeah uh, I've been uh, my name is uh, Bakhtin Rosa I've been uh, I visited temple first time 2011 I think so that's like 10 years ago and then I slowly started to mm, kind of engage myself. I wasn't looking for spiritual anything. I was an angry anarchist punker. And so I was a little bit like doubtful for many years, but then uh, our philosophy is so great. So that's like even stubborn person like me got <laughs> converted. <laughs> and of course, chanting is something that can melt anyone's heart. So I slowly started to chant and be more serious devotee. And especially being in, I visited Brindavan three times and stayed there for a month and that really changed my life like being there living in that kind of spiritual bubble uh, and I also remember being in your lecture in a uh, Prabhupada quarter uh, sometime I don't remember a year or anything but but oh. I, I remember it really made an impression on wow. me I think if I'm correct yeah I really at the manner at the manor, mm -hmm. you were at the, you were at the manor. No, 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 in uh, in Vrindavan, uh, oh, Prabhupada quarter in Krishna Balaram temple. Okay. 
Okay. I can't yeah. quite remember. I may have given a talk that I can't quite remember. Okay. It was years ago if it was yeah. that. But anyway. <laughs> yeah. And then, well, now I've been living in our farm. We have a small a farm, Kopala Lakso or Kopala Valley here in Finland. And we are just in a pioneering stage. There's basically five of us living here now. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm a gardener, soon to be graduated, and I also do uh, rap music. Krishna Conscious, I try to do. Uh, Wonderful. Yeah, I, I don't know what else to say, but thank you for this song. I participate because I really uh, want want to hear all this nectar you are sharing here. And, and just this Sadhu Sangha, Vaishnava Sangha, is very, very, very important for my spiritual life. Thank you so much, Rosa. It's such a pleasure um, to meet you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Hare Krishna, Sintamani. Very nice to meet you. Hi, Krishna Mataji. Very nice to meet you too. So my name is Mira and uh, I'm uh, 44 years old and I'm a new devotee. I started uh, chanting a uh, little over one year ago and, uh, and uh, I've read the Bhagavad Gita until uh, 15th chapter now. Wonderful. So that's my history with Krishna consciousness. <laughs> and what brings you here this evening? What, what do you hope to get out of this evening? Oh well, um, because I don't know many bhaktas i'm so new it's just so wonderful to associate with other other bhaktas and 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 just listen and learn okay thank you yeah. so much thank you it's a pleasure to meet you thank you very much hare krishna hare krishna okay uh, i guess everybody knows me already my name is ambika devidasi and um I'm from Finland, but I have lived uh, at the Bhaktivedanta Manor, UK, uh, the recent years. And um, my heart is still kind of based at the manor. <laughs> I'm still, you know, I'm still in the, you know, keeping in touch uh, regularly with the devotees there. And we have uh, this type of Zoom meetings as well. And, mm -hmm and all kinds of activities together. But um, yes, I also love to um, be here in Finland now. And I see that there's a lot of very nice opportunities here as well. Very nice devotees and association. And I personally learn so much with uh, all the wonderful devotees. And also while I have been working on this improving Sadhu Sangha project, Recently, I already explained to Chintamani Mataji that it's been a very um, deep and wonderful um, process to go through all these things. And the most important is to learn that what things actually are the most important for us all in our spiritual life, for well, me personally, but also for everyone in general. And, you know, of course, to get deeper into Srila Prabhupada's instructions about this topic. So wow. thank, thank you so much for joining in. And Chintamani Mataji, thank you so much for coming and enlightening us about giving thank us this opportunity. I feel like a fraud when you thank me because I feel very grateful to you that you're interested in this subject. And um, I just would like to make a little proviso. I'm, I am not qualified to enlighten anyone because I'm a conditioned soul, but I can share with you, and I have shared on the Improving Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, things I've heard from Prabhupada. You'll see that everything we put on the Improving Our Sadhu Sangha is quotes from Prabhupada. And, and anything that we say is, we completely support it with what Prabhupada is saying. So I think, uh, I hope that, Prabhupada's Vani, his instructions will enlighten me and you, all of us together, if we can just discuss them. So thank you very much for having me here. 
and I look forward to the rest of the our time together. I think we're going to spend, we've been together now for one hour and you said another hour. So we'll continue mm -hmm. from here. Yes. So I was saying to Ambika Prabhu that, um, you know, we go to a lot of lectures and we just sit and we listen and we listen passively, but not a lot changes for us in our lives, just listening passively. And I don't know how many of you have watched any of the Improving Our Sadhu Sangha videos or looked at the Improving Sadhu Sangha um, website and read any of the principles. Might just have people telling me if they have looked at, they have read it, read or learned anything from the Improving Our Sadhu Sangha. May I just ask who has had the time to do that? Can anyone just say out loud if they've read it or watched it? Yes. You thank you so much. Anyone else other than Sham Radhika? Um, not not all. I have read it, but some okay, most but some of it. Ambika had to send us. Anyone else read anything? I have tried few, not all, and there are so many. <laughs> yes, yeah, so there's 16 principles. And these yes. are all the, uh, in the beginning, I was introducing myself. These are all the things that we were hearing from Prabhupada that changed our lives. So I'm going to tell you, principle five is, uh, I'm just opening it up. Principle five is talking about, Prabhupada says many quotes that when you hear, you have to repeat what you're hearing. When we go to a class and we just sit, you know, maybe a big sannyasi, maybe one of ourselves, where well, we sit and we just listen passively without repeating anything, without engaging. It will go in this ear and out that. It will not really sink into our hearts. There will be no deep connection with what we're hearing. And there's no certainty we've understood it correctly even. We may have misunderstood something and then we apply what we think we've heard, but we apply it uh, in the mode of ignorance or the mode of passion, and we don't always get the result. So a very important part of our changing our sadhusanga is we have to repeat what we're hearing. That's what I was trying to do for some of you. When you spoke, I was repeating back what I heard. This is an essential thing for us to do when we study Prabhupada's books. We have to stop, I stop every sentence practically, and then I say, what do I understand proper to mean? And put it in my own words. Um, we have to actively participate in our learning. We can't expect that spiritual life, well, just someone will come and tell me and I will change. No, we have to associate with Prabhupada and make the effort. We can be in the movement, for 40 years and not really deeply change. And we can be in the movement for six months and deeply change if we associate correctly with Prabhupada and really begin to study Gita and repeat in our own words, what is Prabhupada telling me? What is Krishna telling me? And put it in my own words. It's this change of heart that has to take place, which won't take place if we just sit and passively listen without repeating. Would anyone be kind enough to repeat back what you heard? <laughs> this really anyone, okay. Go ahead. Uh, does anyone, Rosa, you can. No, no, you can say. You go ahead. You started already. <laughs> uh, well, you you said that uh, many times we listen to lecture and we. Uh, the lecture might be amazing, but we don't really um, really hear what, what is said there. Um, and then that's why we need to repeat what is like, in, like at least internally. And you were mentioning that every, when you listen to Prabhupada, you, uh, every sentence you kind of put in your own words. Um, Very nice, Rosa. And, uh, and you can be uh, you can be in the movement for a long time and not not change or be a short time and change a lot. You understood really well. Just one point I'd like to clarify because you understood everything so well. You're giving me a chance to clarify. We have to repeat externally. Of course, we can't do that in a lecture. That's why Prabhupada had something called istagosti. How many of you have heard this term, istagosti? Okay. 
Easter ghosties, modern day, this gone, have been used for management purposes. If we want the devotees to clean up after themselves, we hold, look, Easter ghostie. Look, Prabhu's, everyone's leaving their dishes undone. Would you please clean up after it? But Easter ghostie is meant to be philosophical discussion. So there's lecture, and then there's Easter ghostie, where we come together with one or two other devotees, and we repeat externally, you know, if we don't repeat externally, there's no way of confirming if we've understood things properly. Would anyone be kind enough, either Rosa or anyone else, to repeat back what I'm just saying? At least the Costi is meant to, to have like a discussion after the lecture. Yes. And 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 to to repeat what is what what, what was heard from the lecture and have discussion about it. You understood really well. It may be to do with the discussion the lecture, or it could just be we do regular Easter goes to with Prabhupada's books. Prabhupada, let me just Prabhupada said we should discuss his books scrutinizingly, word for word. I will show you the um, the principle that talks about that. Um, I think the principle that says word for word may be principle. I'm just going on my thing. He says, uh, principle three, principle five, six, principle six. He says, word for word, you should discuss my books. So in a lecture, the speaker doesn't do word for word. The speaker talks in general. And I hate to say this, but sometimes the class giver doesn't even really talk about Prabhupada's purport. So that is a problem. But let's say the speaker actually speaks about Prabhupada's purport, which would be very good. Still, in our Easter ghost days, we have to go back to Prabhupada's books and discuss scrutinizingly. We can't discuss scrutinizingly in a lecture because we do one purport for every 45 minutes. So it's hard to go through word for word. But if you look at um, principle... Um, I think it's principle six, scrutinize. You'll see so many quotes from Prabhupada. Um, he says, uh, let me see. each word of Srimad Bhagavatam is important. That's one lecture. And another lecture, he says, so by studying Krishna, you become liberated. So these verses should be studied very carefully, understanding each word very carefully. Then you'll understand Krishna. So daily, me and my husband, we do these discussions. It's separate from the, the lecture. The lecture is for moving forward quickly through the Bhagavatam or the Gita. One verse each lecture. But the Easter Ghosti is now for going through much more slowly and for really scrutinizing what we're reading. It's a little bit like when Lord Chaitanya cleaned Gundisha Temple. You know, one time he, preached, he cleaned Gundisha Temple, it was just for getting out all the external rubbish. And then he made them clean again, scrutinizingly, everything. So we have lecture for general knowledge. But then we need Easter ghosties alongside our lectures, where the devotees, two or three devotees come together, and we scrutinize Prabhupada's words, and we repeat in our own words. This kind of scrutinizing association with Prabhupada will bring about gradually, gradually, a real transformation of our hearts. Anyone would like to repeat back? Okay, can I? Oh, Gopinath Prabhu, please. Oh, yeah, a couple of things came in my mind from this. Like, <clears throat> uh, there's a class for uh, general uh, philosophy, uh, and then there's uh, two or three people, is the ghostly of uh, very scrutinizing, analyzing every word, saying things in their own words. That's actually, now that you quoted, Kundita Mandira's um, cleaning, uh, also from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's past times, like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explained the Atmarama verse for 64 times. Perfect. But I think that's a quite a good example of... Excellent example. Excellent example. Thank mm -hmm. you. So, you know, the thing is, I said to Ambika Prabhu that I didn't want to give you a lecture tonight because I realized we can sit and give lectures and really, you will all go away and nothing changes. 
So what I'm looking for, why I'm giving my time is first of all, I am giving my time because Ambika Prabhu has shown such commitment. She went through the website, she studied it, she transcribed it, she translated it. I think I want to reciprocate with that. She's making an effort. What I'm looking for is to see who's interested in your group to actually learn to improve your sadhu sangha, to actually take the material which is already on their website seriously, study it and apply it to your study of Bhagavad Gita. Or decide, re read it and see, do we agree with the quotes that Chintamani and Krishna Dharma have shared? You may disagree with us, but we're sharing with you things that we heard, that we applied, that has completely made things different for us, improved our lives. So I'm looking for people, and I would be happy just to work with Ambika if she's the only one who really shows an interest to become an active learner, not a passive learner, an active learner. So if there's anyone else in your group who thinks I would like to improve how I associate with Prabhupada, I would like to associate with him in a way that gradually, gradually brings about a real transformation of my heart. I would be happy to work with such groups, small groups, but I would ask of you that you have to make some of your own effort first before I work with you to make your discussions better. Would anyone be kind enough to um, understand anything I said? Mm, I could do. Please. So um, at first you were explaining that uh, when we study Shila Prabhupada's books, we should study very scrutinizingly. So we should read word by word. And that's very important so that we get the correct understanding about what we are learning and um, in that way we make progress as well and then uh, Gopinath Prabhu uh, oh yes and you were talking about the Ishtakoshti which is uh, you know we know it as uh, a meeting at the temple where we gather and we see the practical services and how things are uh, you know um, going on and you know this managerial uh, issues <laughs> brought up and um, actually uh, Ishtakoshti is this philosophical discussion based on philosophical discussion where we get into Srila Prabhupada's instructions and we go through them word to word yes yes, yes. and and then uh, afterwards, um, Gopinath gave this uh, example about uh, Atmarama verse, which yes. is um, devotees who are self-satisfied. And uh, it was repeated 56 times or? So 64 different meanings. 64, different 64 meanings. different meanings. Okay, yes, yes, yes. So, so sorry. <laughs> okay. And then uh, after that, you are explaining that um, you are happy to work with us. You are happy to guide us uh, when we, you know, really want to improve our sadhu sangha and when we really want to learn to associate with Srila Prabhupada and his instructions that we can read from the books. So we can form a small group and we can gather like this and we can do some sessions together. Yes, thank you so much, Ambika. So if anyone's actually interested, that would require that you speak. And in this kind of improving sadhu sangha, you have to be willing to repeat back. I re generally recommend that you do it in small groups of two to three people. Because when you have a group this big, most of you will just sit and listen and not participate. And those people, you know, it's... It'll be, hopefully it'll be of some value, but it won't give you the real effect. The real effect comes when you participate. And it's hard to get 24 people participating, all of them in, for an hour or an hour and a half, even two hours. But if you have small groups 
and you study the improving the, the principles, all the principles that are up, I can quickly go through some of them. You study the principles, practice applying them in small groups. Then as you see what is working for you and what's not working for you, I can join your group and just help you get, get improve your discussions so that your discussions begin helping you more and more. But that takes your commitment. You know, for me to give that time, I, I need to see that, oh, you are also prepared to make your group two, three people, study the principles, try yourselves to apply them, and then let me know where you're struggling. And then I can join your group for one or two sessions and try to help you. Would anyone be kind enough to reflect back? I can try. Thank you. <laughs> so, so you were encouraging us to make a small groups, two or three, because otherwise there's somebody who are not a, a possibility to be involved so much properly once. And, and in the group, it will be scrutinized. So I, I understand it like a uh, sentence by sentence and not whole words at once and so it might be quite slow uh, and then you say that if these groups are developed so you can involve in this and for few meetings and and like uh, give some hints if there's some problems <laughs> yes very nice. You understood very well. Thank you so much. That was an excellent example of reflecting back and putting it in your own words. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, so I'd like to know from you what whether this is something that you'd like to do. Uh, I can just very, I just want to share with you a um, verse uh, from the Bhagavatam, 11.330. Do any of you have access to the Bhagavatam, either on your devices or maybe you have a, a hard copy of the 11th canto near you on your bookshelves? If you can get access on Vedabase online or whatever. Excuse me, Mother Jim, which uh, verse again? Canto 11, chapter 3. Text 30. I have it here in front of me. Fantastic. So I'll just wait till everyone has it, or anyone who wants to have it, have it. And then maybe Gopinath Prabhu, you'd be kind enough to read it once everyone's conceived. It, uh, was it 11th canto, third chapter, and which verse? Text 30. 30. Yes. I didn't hear which chapter. Uh, chapter 3, Canto 11, Chapter 3, Text 30. This is something else we always do in this way of discussing. We actually open up the evidences and we look for ourselves. We don't take it on someone else's word. Look for yourselves always. So has everyone got the text? Everyone who wants to get it has got it now? Okay, so maybe Gopinath, Gopinath Prabhu, uh, you'd be kind enough to read it aloud. You're on mute, Prabhu. Just the translation? Just the translation, please. One should learn how to associate with the devotees of the Lord by gathering with them to chant the glories of the Lord. This process is most purifying. As devotees thus develop their loving friendship, they feel mutual happiness and satisfaction. And by thus encouraging one another, they are able to give up material sense gratification, which is the cause of all suffering. Yes. So a few things Prabhupada says here. We have to learn how to associate. He says this in many other places too. Um, at least one that comes to my mind is Third Canto, Chapter 3, Text 6. Prabhupada writes in that canto, in the purport, 
unless and until one is trained in the culture of good association, one cannot become good. So it requires, again, this point here, one has to learn, one requires training. There is a culture to good association. Um, 1715 Bhagavad Gita tells us some of the culture. It says, when we discuss amongst Shastra, this, our talk should be very pleasing. We shouldn't be attacking each other. Have any of you had this experience? You hear sometimes devotees discussing philosophy and we disagree and we become very rude to each other. Has anyone had this experience or seen it happen with other people? We'll yes. see. There are issues in ISKCON where we did we fall from Vaikuntha or not? Did Was the uh, earth round or flat or should women give initiation or not? And we become very rude with each other. But Bhagavad Gita, chapter 17, text 15, Prabhupada says that discussion amongst the devotees should be very pleasing. We should speak very kindly, very gently to each other. And we should immediately cite Shastra. Immediately, not just say, I read in Bhagavad Gita, but bring it in front of us so we can see it. So this is some of the culture of good association. All these things are there in the principles. All of these things that I'm saying to you uh, the quotes and everything is there in the principles. So we have to learn the culture of a good association. And if we learn the culture correctly and we do correct sadhu sangha, this is what we will experience. We'll develop loving friendships. We will feel, our sadhu sangha will give us mutual happiness and satisfaction. Everyone will go feeling, oh, that was really helpful. That was really nice. And we'll begin to feel, I can do it. We'll feel encouraged. I can do this. Okay, maybe not overnight. Maybe I have to work my way towards giving up my sense. But, I, but slow, step by step, I will do it. And one day we'll actually be able to give up our sense gratification. So if we're doing sadhu sangha properly, there is great benefit. If we're not doing it properly, we won't experience these benefits. So I leave it to you to decide. If you want to study the Improving Our Sadhu Sangha website, if you want to study the, um, um, the principles, if you want to form small groups and start trying to practice the principles and see how it works for you. And if you do that, then in around six months, once you've practiced doing it yourselves, you can come back to me and say, look, it's working great. We don't need any more help or we're really trying, but sometimes our discussions, we're struggling still. Can you give us a little bit more help? So then I'd be happy. Because anything you're struggling with, I probably struggled with too. And I can just share with you how we overcame it. So, but the, the Sangha we have to take is with Prabhupada's Vani. And we have to learn how to take that Sangha in a way which actually together which actually begins to give us this mutual happiness and satisfaction. So I will pause there. Would anyone like to reflect anything back? And then I will let you guys speak after you've reflected back anything I've said. Maybe someone who's not reflected anything back so far. It doesn't matter if this is your first day in Krishna consciousness. You know, you're intelligent. Like Prabhupada said in that lecture, you have your intelligence. You can... It doesn't matter whether we've been in the movement for 30 years or 30 days or three days. But if, you, if something which is being said, you think this is interesting for me, please reflect it back. Anyone would like to go? To give it a try. Okay, uh, perhaps I could uh, I could do. Uh, so let me think. How did it start? Um, we read eleventh canto, chapter three, text thirty. Yes, we read uh, this verse from Shrimad Bhagavatam, and it speaks about uh, how we should learn how to associate with the devotees and how we should gather together and discuss about 
Shila uh, Prabhupada's instructions and glories of the Lord. And in this way, we purify ourselves and eventually we come to a level where we really realize the instructions and we realize Krishna. But for that, we need to practice and we need to see the endeavors and we can decide ourselves uh, whether we want to continue for, you know, for some time, gather uh, in small groups and see how we make progress, how we experience this and what kind of doubts, what kind of questions we will face if we will face something. Eventually we will. When we work on something, then we um, go through things and, and uh, the change happens within the heart at the same time when we really focus on, focus on learning and uh, understanding. So this is up to us. Um, did I understand you correctly, Matachi? Perfectly, Ambika. I sweat a lot and that was really hard to reflect that back. I'm really impressed. Thank you so much. Thank you. So I've now said everything I want to say. And I leave it up to you. I did tell Ambika I'd like to hear from you. So I've spoken a lot. Um, I'm happy to hear your comments uh, or your impressions, your questions, anything you would like to say. Okay. So shall I start with a question? Please do. Uh, I made quite a lot of notes when I was um, hearing the seminar videos and there was some interesting and because these topics are very deep philosophical and also dealing with our uh, empathy towards others and our connections and how we practice like this how we yeah. practice as a group so it's a very wonderful and fascinating topic as well because it's related to you know krishna consciousness the spiritual um, connection is there as well. So, um, could you elaborate a little bit about this? Okay, you're saying that, let me just reflect back. You're saying you made quite a few notes and asked questions as you were going through the transcriptions. And one thing you realized that it talks a lot about our connections, how we connect together. Uh, and how we relate together. Uh, and with, but putting Krishna in the center, it's with Krishna involved as well. So did I understand you correctly? Yes, you and, understood me very well, thank you. Thank you. And, and you're wanting to know if I could say a little bit more about, uh, about that aspect of how we connect together and how we develop our relationships with Krishna in the middle. Yes. Okay, so thank you, Ambika. I really appreciate it. So putting Krishna in the middle, as far as I understand, I can only share my lights with you, is putting Prabhupada's Fani. In the age of uh, Kali, Bhagavatam is Krishna. There is that verse in the first canto where it says, in the age of Kali, when, when Krishna has departed, where will, where will religious principles reside? It's in the Bhagavad, Bhagavatam and also Bhagavad Gita because Krishna's spoken word is non-different from Krishna. Krishna's name is non-different from him. Krishna's words are not different from him. And the Bhagavatam is all about him. So these two, at least these main scriptures, Gita, Bhagavatam, CC is more advanced, but Gita and Bhagavatam are the core um, texts that we all have to st study if we want to advance spiritually. So putting Krishna in the center of our relationship means coming together and discussing these books. Gita, if we can't have time for both, at least Gita, you will see amongst the quotes um, I have that Prabhupada says that one cannot understand Bhagavatam if one has not understood the Gita. Let me see if I can find it. What that, that study of the Gita is essential, otherwise we can't even understand the Bhagavatam. So putting Krishna in the center means putting at least Gita in the center. And 
how we relate together. Many of the principles on the, um, one of the main principles on the uh, uh, web page is to discuss, I think it's principle nine, to discuss with humility, gratitude, mutual appreciation and respect. Because very often, and I'm sure this doesn't happen amongst uh, you devotees, you all strike me as being very gentle and very um, respectful and kind devotees, but it can happen in our movement. It can happen in, our, in the association of ISKCON devotees that we bring our disrespect and our lording it over uh, and our kind of like one-upmanship into our association with each other. So a very important part of the improving our Sarasanga approach is to work on the discussing with appreciating each other, gentility. Even this act of reflecting back shows I've listened to you. I'm interested in what you have to say. You know, I, I'm, I'm being attentive to you. Um, I'd like to find out from those of you I reflected things back to you, how it made you feel that I actually heard you. Because so often we talk and we feel that no one really heard me. So a lot about our improving our side of Sangha approach that builds our mutual loving relationships is learning to actually show that appreciation for each other, show that respect to each other, hear each other. Little things you've heard Ambika and myself say, Ambika's been studying the videos, so she's really good at it. When I reflect things back, she says, Yes, you understood perfectly. This is gratitude. Gratitude In material life, when someone does something that we don't like, when some, someone does something that upsets us, we're very good at telling them, no, you didn't understand me. That was all wrong. You know? But when someone does something good, we don't take the time to thank them, to tell them, wow, thank you. You understood me perfectly. So these kinds of, as I call them in English, niceties, these little... Um, kindnesses to each other, these little efforts to appreciate each other, they're very important and integral part of the improving our Sarasanga approach to Sarasanga. It's very important. It's, it's one whole principle is dedicated to it, but it's really, it is, it's there in other principles too, uh, like repeating back. I don't, I don't know if that's what you uh, were hoping I would say or where I was going to go with it, but I hope it's connected to your the point that you raised. Yes, thank you very much, Mataji. Um, you understood me perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, can I reflect back to you? I would love that. I would love that. Thank you. So, um, first of all, um, you were explaining that we can find the religious principles uh, from Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. And those uh, scriptures are what we should learn so that we are able to make advancement in Krishna consciousness in our spiritual life. And for that advancement, we also need to gather together to discuss about these transcendental subject matters that we can find from uh, Srila Prabhupada's purports and translations. And for that reason, for our mutual happiness and advancement as well, which are hand in hand together, um, we need to connect in a proper way, which is, or it requires our humility and mutual appreciation towards uh, one another. And um, then sometimes it can happen that um, we end up in a difficult situation where um, there's disrespectful behaviors and things like this, um, which is not favorable for us to yes because we don't get inspired if we are put down or um, or if we need to argue about such subject matters that 
reflect with the heart, where the churning of the heart happens, because I understood that this is not academic studying that we are doing, but it's uh, like particularly for the heart, you for the change. Perfectly. You so nicely, you put it in your own words and you really captured the essence of what I was saying. Thank you, Ambika. I'm sorry I cut you short. I was just so impressed with how you reflected back. Did you want to say more, please? That I, I interrupted you. No, I, I think um, I don't remember more. <laughs> yeah, that was perfect. You really captured where, I, where I'm going with this. Thank you. So I don't know if anyone else has any comments or contribution, <clears throat> anything they agree or disagree with or any questions. I actually, uh, I was thinking of uh, one of the principles was talking about empathy, empathetic yes. listening yes. and um, to, um, to experience the other person's um, attempt, how do you call it? To repeat back. So well, I'm just trying to find the, the principle of regularly repeating your own words, scrutinize the meaning. Don't, okay, it's principle seven. I think it's, uh, no, no, it's not principle seven. It's principle eight. Help your discussion partner develop their own understanding by using empathic hearing skills. You may have experienced this. If I reflect back what you're saying, it gives you a chance to clarify your thoughts, to think. When we're discussing this philosophy, this philosophy is difficult. If we really, it's a science. It's a science and it's very nuanced. It's not black or white. It's a chinta, a chinta beta beta type of it. It's very inconceivable. It's very nuanced. So when we're discussing, we repeat, we're trying to put what property is saying, we're trying to understand. It really helps us if our discussion partner reflects back what we're saying to us, because that helps us clarify. It helps us to hear our own thoughts. So rather than turning it into like a ping pong match, no, I disagree. No, it says this. No, I disagree. It says this. We take the time to help each other. If you're thinking about someone, something proper is saying, even if I don't agree with your thinking, I will first just keep understanding you, keep helping you to think your thoughts through, to be able to try to try to go where you're trying to go. <laughs> Because in the beginning, we're, we're almost feeling our way. It's a new science for all of us. So that empathic listening to each other, repeating back to each other with respect, that really helps us to think our thoughts through. Is that what you were, is that the principle you were referring to? Yes, yes, because it's very deep and very important. If I can uh, just reflect back a little bit, um, if I can um, still remember. So um, we need to um, use this empathetic uh, listening skills um, so that we can help out each other and yes. we can clear each other's thoughts about what they have just been talking about. Yes. Perfect. It gives us a deeper um, aspect to what we are studying. Yes, yes, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? And you said also that even if you don't agree what the other one is saying, you try to get deeper into uh, this other person's uh, thought process and try to understand it more deeply before yes. you shoot your comments. Yes, thank you, Gopinath, for picking up on that. Yes. And this is part of our respect for each other. You know, this um, principle eight, I think, is empathic hearing. But principle seven is don't debate. It's very interesting. These are all things we heard from Prabhupada, and we put them together into principles. But let me just read you something Prabhupada says in principle seven. He says, don't debate. This is a letter that Prabhupada wrote to a devotee called Tribhuvanath. It was a proper disciple. How many of you knew Tribhuvanath or heard of him? Some of you who came to, yes, Gopinath, I thought you were in the UK, you may know of him. And uh, Janardan Prabhu. 
So Shubhavna in 72 was the uh, president for the Scottish temple and Prabhupada wrote him this letter in 1972. He said, I'm very much stressing nowadays that my students shall increase their reading of my books and try to understand them from different angles of vision. Each shloka can be seen from many, many angles of vision. So become practiced in seeing things like this. And I love the fact that Gopinath Prabhu raised the, uh, uh, the uh, Atmarama verse. Lord Chaitanya, he's God. He saw 64 different lights. But as conditioned souls, we may not see 64. And you know, the lights Lord Chaitanya saw, they contradicted each other. He would understand the same word to mean very wealthy and very poor, very learned and very ruffian very bad character so he saw different lights but all his lights were correct so when we come to discuss with each other we may not see all the lights krishna may give us one or two lights and the other person he gives a different light what we generally do we end up arguing with each other no you're wrong and i'm right no you're wrong and i'm right you're a, you're a, uh what you call it? we insult each other but in the improving our sadhu sangha, we become practiced. We think, oh, this person sees it different from, differently from me. That's okay. Let me try to understand their perspective. Let me help them to see if they, we can find any. Let me help them. To, let me help them to think. Later on, I can share my light. I don't have to agree with them, but let me help them. Let me see from their perspective, because Prabhupada told us become practiced in seeing things from different perspectives. And this is a very important aspect of the improving our sarusanga approach to discussing Prabhupada's books, that we learn to treat each other's lights, even if they're different from our own, with respect and help each other. I have one discussion partner um, who he also does my website for me. His name is Bakta Pranas. He's from Lithuania, very intelligent devotee. Uh, he's he's been in the, he's been studying Prabhupada's books for over twenty years, but he's taking initiation very seriously. He's now applying for an, he's now um, trying to get initiated, but very serious devotee, very nice. And he and I, because he's a single man uh, who's been in the movement for twenty years, and I'm a married woman who's been in the movement for forty years. So our experiences, like I had two gurus who fell, he hasn't had any guru who's fallen. You know, I had experiences from a woman's perspective. He's only had experiences from a man's perspective, an unmarried man at that. So our, our life experiences, when we study the same, we do discussions and our discussions are all on the website. We put them on the website just to let people see how you can disagree, but you can disagree nicely with each other. So his perspective on the same sentence is a completely different perspective from mine. He doesn't shout me down and tell me that I'm faithless and I'm just, uh, and I don't shout him down. We try to understand each other's perspectives. And oftentimes, both of us grow. Both of us grow. I see things from my life experience, from my, he sees things from his life experience, his perspective. And we often uh, start disagreeing. But we don't, in the Imos method, we don't actually start fighting. We never disagree. Just very different perspectives. And then by the end of the discussion, both of us have a more mature understanding. And his, if you want to see how you can have different perspectives and not fight, you can look at some of the discussions I do with Pranas. We discuss the CC together. Uh, and yeah, very different perspectives, but we both end up growing because we learn to reflect back the other person's perspective before sharing our own. Uh, excuse me, uh, can I say something here? Please do, Shah Radhika Mataji. Yeah, I'm just driving to the temple, actually. Uh, I've been listening all the time. <clears throat> uh, yeah, that's very nice. I, I just, when you started to do this um, reflecting back, I, I realized that when I was studying social work, and we did this counseling sessions and we had theory about counseling clients. Yes. That was the, the tactique, you know, like, I mean, yes. you can say tactique that you, you do just like that. And uh, I'm very happy that we do it here with each other. And 
I think this is something devotees have quite much uh, to improve. Yes. You know? That um, I had the feeling, I, don't, I hope I don't offend anybody, but I feel that the devotees might have, me including, to have a tendency to kind of categorize each other that, okay, this person is like that and uh, um, kind of maybe not listen so carefully. And um, this kind of, I think this kind of rephrasing and reflecting back culture is not very prominent with yes, yes. many devotee dealings, at least what I, I have experienced during these years. I mean, some do it a little bit, but yeah. And yeah, that's very, I'm very happy that we discuss about this, you know, <laughs> really. <laughs> Thank you, Sean Radhika Mataji. So you were saying that when you were studying social work, this was a very important skill that you had to practice. Yeah, to yeah. And it's, a, and it's a practice and it's a habit that's really not practiced enough amongst our devoted communities. And therefore we end up, end up putting each other into a box. Oh, she's that kind of a person or he's that kind, he's a fanatic or she's loose or he's, you know, complacent or he's not, yeah. we, we, we just categorize. We don't really deeply understand each other because we never really hear each other. Did I understand you correctly? Yeah, thank you. I, I, I tried to say something like that. Yeah, really good. <laughs> I hope okay. it doesn't offend anybody. <laughs> no, it was a wonderful comment. And I'll tell you something else. My husband and myself had been married for 15 years before we started doing this. Mm. And for the by the end of that 15 years, first of all, the 15 years was constant squabbling. And towards the end of it, we were actually thinking of maybe we should just separate. It was just... So much arguing because we never actually heard each other. We talked at each other. We assumed things about each other. We just talked at each other. Since we've been doing this, I have three children and they're all adults now. One of them's I'm grandmother now too. But anyway, that's besides mm. the point. Um, you ask any of my children and I'd be happy to give their details to you. We don't argue anymore. It's not that we don't have differences of opinion. Sometimes we may not get hurt from each other. We immediately go into this form of discussion. We immediately just begin reflecting back. And what would have become an argument 15 years ago or 20 years ago, now doesn't become an argument. It becomes a heart to heart where we both deepen our understanding of each other. And the misunderstanding kind of like just like evaporates into the air and we end up more deeply connected, greater empathy for each other because we use this approach to to miss to what could end up what could have ended up into a big argument now instead of separating us our differences bring us closer together because we begin to see from the other person's perspective so it's a it's a, an approach that will really help our grihasta ashram and i know that we hear a lot of preaching about how grihastas are you know, out of it, we're not important. But the Grihasta Ashram is the bedrock of society. It is in the, from Grihasta Ashram comes everybody else. If the Grihasta Ashram is floundering, then our sannyasis will not be good. Our brahmacharis will not be good. You know, we'll all be mentally, emotionally unstable. Grihasta Ashram is so important. And this is a very good habit to help us make our Grihasta Ashram more stable and more loving. Any other, anyone else would like to make any comments? I could make a few comments. Yes, I like it, the idea that, that it's nice to know so many viewpoints, like you say that you are female and somebody is male and, and then there's age differences and probably marriage differences and so on. Uh, I think in spiritual life, if I see myself, I see that I probably have several lives still ahead, hopefully not. But in a way, it might be helpful that I can learn from others so I don't have to keep repeat, repetition my life yeah. so longer so that was a nice idea what i get from your <laughs> thank discussion you. thank you thank you and and i would encourage you to also add your own viewpoints you know there's two words i don't know if you've heard of this shastra chakshush have you heard of this phrase 
Shastra Chakshus uh, is on the website. Um, Prabhupada says we have to become, we have to learn to see through the eyes of scripture. Shastra means scripture, Chakshush means see. We have to learn to see through the eyes of scripture. And another phrase Prabhupada liked, he said, I want my devotees to be independently thoughtful, that we learn to think for ourselves. In, the, in Bhagavad Gita chapter four, text 34, Prabhupada says, blind following is condemned just to accept what someone else says without thinking for ourselves. So we have to learn to think for ourselves, but not mental speculation, not just I think in my opinion, but we have to learn to think for ourselves through the eyes of scripture. So when you come together to do this Shastra discussion, it's very important that each of us takes the turn of saying what I understand. It's nice that we hear other people's understandings too. We will grow but it's very important that we learn to think for ourselves through the eyes of scripture. So I hope you will have the courage to also say your own understanding. Yes, I think that my biggest difference is that I'm not a philosophical person at all, <laughs> but then I'm very happy to have a nice conversation, those who have those skills more. <laughs> okay, Hare Krishna. So yes. um, we have 15 minutes left, then, because that's if everyone else is still is up for 15 minutes. I was wondering if we could just go through everyone who's not and just ask, okay, we all introduced ourselves in the beginning, uh, but what have you taken from this now? And what do you want? How do you want to go ahead? Would that be possible for us to go and ask everyone to speak, speak a little bit about what, how, how they found this session and how this if this session from this session they plan to do anything and what they how they plan to go forward it was just a nice session that's it finished or it was a nice session it's made me think like this i plan to do this i would love to hear from all of you i'm sorry for noise around i i wanted to ask is it is it normal uh i have from Sh shreeman bhagavatam Two of my favorite chapters, which I love to read again and again, and it's like a meditation for me to read them. And I feel, I, I, I think that I feel Krishna's presence when I read them. And sometimes I just love to read them without reading purports. I read many times, and then later I read Prabhupada's purports. And sometimes I am, I get disappointed that. For this text, there came just as the such a small purport, but I actually from the one text, I, I it touched my heart so much, and I related, or I I, I looked through my women and mothers and everything, all the crazy life's uh, perspective, and I I I feel like why Prabhupada wrote such a small purport for example i feel like i as a woman with my experiences i would write um, <laughs> five or ten pages purport for this text and why there is just a few the, on my opinion so less less important things when there are much more important things and then yeah I, I would love to really discuss with also some very, very philosophical thinking persons. Is it normal that I understood other things with those texts? Yeah. And, and yeah, is it like there can be this 64 perspectives for each text, but, but Prabhupada couldn't write all those perspectives. He just wrote the shortest version that, that Purport sometimes seems like too short. So, so you're saying, Carla, Prabhu, you're saying that uh, there's two chapters in the Bhagavatam that you really love and that really speak to you. Um, but some of the verses, in fact, some of your favorite verses, Prabhupada writes really short purports. Whereas if you were writing the Bhagavatam, these are the verses you would write essays on. Like, <laughs> because exactly, those, those exactly. Verses. <laughs> yes. so you're saying, is it okay to say more from the verse than Prabhupada says in the purport? Can we expand on the verse, even though Prabhupada hasn't expanded on in that way in the purport? Yeah. yeah. Very nice. I think if we, we ha whatever we say, we have, this is one of the important things from the Improving Our Sadhu Sangha, 
is that if we can support it with Shastra, and this is something people initially, when I've tried to share this with devotees in England, one of the have one of the principles that most people think, oh, I'll never, I'll never do this. This is too difficult. Is um, it, is um, principle? Hang on, I'll just tell you. Fourteen. Principle fourteen is cite shastra. Whatever we say, we should support it with shastra. Not just I heard or such and such Swami said or I let Prabhupada once said. No. Where is it in Shastra? Let's bring it up. So this is one, of, if we can support our insights with Shastra, and this is something that people initially always think, I can't do this. But when I work with them, they begin to realize it's very easy. We research Shastra rather than talking and talking and talking and talking. And we're speculating. We don't know what we're talking about. If we're thinking, okay, I think it's this, then everyone in the group, with me and my husband, we will stop talking for our five, 10 minutes as both of us research the Veda base. You can also research using Google these days if you don't have Veda base. You can Google something, Prabhupada, and Prabhupada's quotes will come up. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, we take time to research Shastra. And so, if, if there's something in the verse that Prabhupada doesn't comment on in the verse, in, in the purport, if you can support what you're saying with Shastra, and if you don't know Shastra, you can learn to research Shastra. Um, then it's still valid as long as it's supported by the Siddhanta, the, the conclusions of the scripture. Does that make sense? It sounds a little hard at first, especially if you don't have a lot of experience of the scriptures. But by, by regularly discussing with the help of another devotee, we'll begin to realize that, my God, I'm learning things and it's sticking because I'm researching it, I'm repeating it, I'm talking about it, and gradually our knowledge will increase. So, my yes, if you can support it with scripture. <laughs> Otherwise, there's the danger we go into the realm of mental spec speculation, and you know, that's okay, but we won't make spiritual advancement. We'll just be remain on the I think, in my opinion, and there's no, we're not really connecting with Krishna's message. But if we can support our lights with scripture, then that's a real connection. I, uh, did you feel satisfied with that or not satisfied? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It seems very daunting, and that's why I suggest you do it in groups of two or three, and you do it as a partnership. You help each other. You help each other research. You reflect back. You help each other. Um, it's hard to do alone, especially if you're not very familiar with the scriptures. But if you do it with someone and you're doing it like it, for me, when I'm discussing Shastra, I feel like an archaeological adventure. I don't, it's what will I discover? I don't know it all, but what can I discover? And then sometimes you see something, you think, oh, maybe there's something here. Maybe I can explore this a little bit more and find something. So it can become an adventure or it can become very daunting. But um, I like to see it as an adventure of discovery, of discovery of Shastra and also self-discovery. Uh, yes, thank you. I will try research those. Yeah. But don't start in the hard bit. Start in the beginning, the Gita, and start building your knowledge step by step. Which chapters do really touch your heart in the Bhagavatam? Mm, yeah, I... Which I canter? really love, I, I can't do anything with that. Which I canter? really love this um, song sung by Lord Shiva. And then also that in the fourth canto, I think it's fourth chapter about Sati leaving her body. I don't know. Wow. Wow. I don't know. Sati touched my heart so much. I, wow. I can't. I'm sorry, I can't do anything about that. There no, are personalities which somehow 
Those are amazing I, I, I prayers. Don't know, I'm a huge fan of they, they somehow. Lord teach. Shiva's prayers to, that he teaches to the uh, pre, uh, to the uh, brothers, um, the beginning with P. Uh, what's the name yes. of the brother? Prachetas. Prachetas. They're yes. such important prayers. And uh, yes, yeah, Sati is a section with such a, such a wonderful thing. And you carry on relishing those for yourself, but go back to the beginning of the Gita and begin to put in the building blocks of your knowledge. Put in the building blocks because those are wonderful prayers. But yeah, this uh, this song sung by Lord Shiva, I reading to kids, and in the evening, sometimes till one a.m., my daughter asked me, "Mom, read about read Shiva's song." We wow. I but but I really love to read it just through whole song without purports yeah and then those purports i read later for myself but yeah, uh, yeah the whole song it's just i i don't know i i love i read so many times it always i read something find something new in this song carla don't let me put you off doing this this is a wonderful practice you're doing and there's different kinds of reading we can do. If you've connected with something like the prayers of Lord Shiva, the song of Lord Shiva, those are such powerful so um, prayers. That's very beneficial for you in your life. You carry on doing that. Don't let me stop you. What I'm doing is something in addition. It's another kind of, it's another kind of association with the scripture. What you're doing is feeding your soul. It's nourishing you. It's keeping you and your children enlivened in your Krishna consciousness. You carry on doing it. What I'm talking about, this kind of threadbare discussion, is, is, is a little different approach, but they both can help us in different ways. So don't, put, don't feel at all that I'm trying to say what you're doing isn't good. It's wonderful that you have such an attachment to these prayers. You're very fortunate. Yeah, about sati, what really touched my heart is like what we should do when we experience um, Vaishnava Aparadha, that, yeah. that, that, that fire, what we should have. Well, I, I, I feel also bad I have also done Vaishnava Aparadha, but somehow when I read about sati, I understand that's what we should do when we hear some Vaishnava Aparadha. Yeah, you're saying the special lesson you take from the experience of sati is how angry we should become. When how unbearable goes. that yeah. you really feel like you are just the worst Burning. shudra, <laughs> that you just have to leave this body because you are the wor worse than shudras. And, and yeah. oh, this is, yeah, I, I love her so much. Can't Thank you so much for sharing that with me. It's, it's um, enlightening to see your passion and connection with those sections thank you would anyone else like to share uh, how they felt about our session together this evening uh, before we part uh, say our pronouns to each other would anyone else like to say if, they, if it's something they'd like to try themselves Hare Krishna Rosa Hare Krishna uh, I would like to say something I'm sorry about the noise going on in the farm uh, but uh, I really like two points and they were really actually like beneficial for me at this moment uh, there were the ones we were talking about just recently uh, uh, searching things from Shastra yourself like always look it up from, from Prabhupada's books what he said and the other one was that uh, never like Start to debate with anyone so when we are like discussing with devotees kind of if we just like decide not to have a debating mood then there won't be a debate right because it always requires two so this is something that really I, I, I find very useful at this moment because I've had like in my mind I wanted to talk about one thing with one devotee who is sharing very disturbing uh, links in in, in Facebook and I wanted to kind of uh, do something about it because I feel that, that this person very Krishna conscious but what is being shared is not good for anyone so I feel that uh, these two points were the things that were required and also be like a personal person you know 
not to go talk things in a debating mood in Facebook, for example, or platforms like that, or talking with someone else, talking straight to the person in like like the being like talking in a small group. Just yeah. so different. Like then we can actually reciprocate with each other yeah. on a personal level. So yeah, thank you. This was very uh, something I really needed to hear. Thank you, Rosa. Can I reflect back? So you're saying three thank things you. you take from it. One is always go look at the Shastra yourself. Don't just take it blindly. Look at the evidence. Look at what is written in scripture yourself. Secondly, is don't approach uh, other devotees in a debating mood. You know, if, even if they say something you don't agree with, you don't have to engage with them in a debating mood. If they, if they want to start an argument, you don't have to enter into that argument. Um, and the last thing is if you do... Uh, want to share things with a devotee do it in a small groups where they can actually be a relationship where you can actually engage and listen to each other and hear each other um, so personalize it rather than just like trying to advertise it all over facebook our arguments did i understand you correctly yes perfectly thank you so rosa i'd like to know from you is this something you would like to try to work on um, practice start trying to practice some of uh, doing discussing maybe Gita if you don't feel that you can right now because you're busy I understand but I just like trying to assess how many in your group would like to try to study the improving our study Sangha website and start trying to improve um, apply some of the principles to your discussions is it something you would personally like to plan to start doing or, or are you too busy right now yes definitely uh, those two things, I, I'm really interested and really, uh, I'm really inclined to this topic and I feel it's very relevant, but also I'm very busy right now, but it's something that will uh, eventually it will change. So I cannot right now, I cannot commit to anything, but I'm, I'm definitely open and, and like I'm hearing, I'm here like okay. observing how okay. the situation will evolve and I, I would like to participate in one way or another as much as I can and I really appreciate this this uh, level of discussion what we're having it's really I find it very deep yeah thank you very thank you much. So much okay hi Krishna hi. anybody else would like to share with me what before we go uh, uh, if you plan to if you if you found anything in today's session something that you plan to apply in your life if you'd like to if you plan to start trying to do these kinds of Gita discussions would anyone else like to share with me Okay. I have something that I would like to share. Please go ahead. Uh, at the moment, I uh, feel that the most powerful thing that I just, you know, realized uh, during our discussion was that when we, uh, when you were speaking about uh, how we are lazy at uh, showing our gratitude, that we pick up negative things, and that's that's the conditioning that's the mode of ignorance in us <laughs> yeah so by practicing like this like rosa was explaining how important it is then um we come to the mode of goodness actually yeah. isn't it yeah. and then we gradually um get rid of this kind of conditioning of black and white and we learn to see this sastra chakshus yes very nice. Thank oh, you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mataji. <laughs> My pleasure. So thank you all for your time. And uh, thank you, Ambika, for giving me this opportunity to associate with you all. Uh, I hope that you feel there was something that will um, enrich, something that will enrich you from giving these two hours. That you've taken something which it enriches you. So May I offer my obeisances to everybody? And Bancha Kalpa, Trubischa, Kripa Sindubi Evacha, Patita Nampa, Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. My pleasure, Ambika. Hare Krishna, everybody. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, thank you so much. Hare Krishna, thank you. Hey, 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 hey,
Siihen tuli joku ylimääräinen laatikko tuohon kuvaruudulle.